Watching Zainab made me cringe. Made me cringe, made me cringe. A lot of people don't realize this, but there is a sense of grandiose associated with being the victim. This lady is clearly full of shit. I'm just going to keep it real, you know, but I think she's being intentional doing it, especially with her poise because she knows she's a woman and she knows that people are going to watch this and they're going to cry her a river. I've seen so many people do this. Men also do it, but I think this particular strategy is most common with women. In a relationship, it's most common with women. I know that I have this unpopular opinion about everything and i'll probably get some hatred and backlash for this for being a woman hater trust me this is not what i'm doing i'm just calling out the bullshit oh my god in my personal opinion i think that cole dodged the bullet One. what's going on everyone welcome back to another episode of let's talk about us with uche i am your boy uche if you are new here please make sure to download share with your friends and family if you are watching me on youtube for the first time please also make sure to subscribe do not forget to hit that bell notification so anytime i upload a video you'll be the very first to be notified so today i wanted to come out here and give my own commentary on the netflix series love is blind as you all probably know love is blind released their third season and i've been watching it on and off and today i just finished watching the reunion part of it it made me cringe it made me very uncomfortable uh first of all a couple of disclaimers i'm not here to advocate for love is blind nor am i here to talk down on it watch it if you want to to me personally it's sort of one of those shows that i watch in the background as i clean my home or i do something i don't really take it that serious me personally i don't really advise to go on a, on a reality tv show to find love no disrespect to anyone who's on that show i get it you know finding a mate in this country or in this society right now is very difficult People are truly lonely and I get that. It's very unfortunate that we live in a society or in a time and age where everyone is connected but no one is connecting. It's kind of like an ironic situation so I get it. A lot of people are truly lonely and connecting with other people in a more traditional sense, whatever that is to you, maybe tender, maybe in a face-to-face -face, uh, level, is not really working for a lot of people and sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. So these people, shout out to them for taking a leap of faith and going on TV to find love. Again, that's not really my thing but I do respect them for taking that leap of faith and doing something a little bit more unorthodox so and of course if you're coming on tv to look for love you have to be prepared for the backlash opinions and things like that secondly i do want to give another disclaimer i am not here to bash women <laughs> this is not anything this has nothing to do with bashing women at all trust me i am an equal opportunities i love everyone equally men and women i just believe in accountability honest accountability irrespective of who you are race gender ethnicity sexual orientation and so on and so forth part of being a human being is that sometimes we're wrong sometimes we're right when you're wrong it is important for you to be called out for your behavior you know and rightfully so you do not get a pass at a ne negative behavior just because of whatever social privilege or socially constructive privilege the word has has indoctrinated you into believing that you deserve so i do not conform to that and of course uh, i wouldn't be surprised if people think that some of my opinions are offensive i get it this is not the first time i've been called out for thinking outside the box and having unpopular opinions but i'm just going to be as honest and brutally as possible and communicate effectively by saying that this is not me trying to bash on a woman i just have common sense and discernment that being said i do want to go ahead and talk about cole and zainab's situation or their relationship or lack of i took my time to watch this and just watching the whole reunion and also of course watching the whole thing that played out between these two just made me cringe and uncomfortable and i felt moved by my spirit to talk about this i'm not saying that all these people are perfect they all have their own issues just like i have my own issues just like you have your own issues no human being is born complete you know we all have to go through the multiple several processes of life you know and maturity and body mind and spirit i get it so this is not me judging harshly from the perspective of i am better than these people but the reason why i want to talk about this specifically is because i've seen so many people stuck in this i want to call it demonic cycle it is very common more common than you know matter of fact growing up in my own family i saw a lot of this sick cyclical mess with my own parents so it was very triggering for me and i'm sure it is triggering for a lot of people but i, I want to come out here and elucidate on how and why a lot of people seem to get stuck in this mentality in this sick cycle i do want to give a honorable shout out to my favorite people on here i think my favorite person here is raven raven is not just a hottie she's also very impersonable she's she has a mentality she has she has a grace i like her calmness her demeanor she's very intelligent she seems like a boss lady a woman who has the ability to do her thing she seemed like a homegirl a person who gets it if you know what it means to get it she seemed like she's one of those people who gets it calm collected she seemed like 
like somebody who has discernment. She seems like somebody you can have an honest adult conversation with and she will meet you halfway. I like people like that, man or woman, period. And I do like I, I do like SK. I, I do think that they are a perfect fit. I do understand why SK would say no on the wedding day. I get it. I think the whole thing was a little bit too rushed for him and also considering the fact that he's moving to California for school. So I get it. You know, take your time to get to know the person you're going to be married to because once you say I do, you walk that aisle, it is forever do you part. So I get it. But yes, by far, they are my favorite couple. I think they're a perfect match. They're both very attractive, very intelligent, very thoughtful, very intentional. I think these are actually two of the very interesting things uh, and must-haves in a relationship, being intelligent and being intentional. This is like if you don't have this and your partner doesn't have this, good luck. But that being said, I do want to go ahead and talk about Cole and uh, Zainab, starting with Cole. I think that Cole, his issue is lack of maturity. Cole to me, and I don't want to tear stereotype, but he gives me the vibe of, you know, a frat boy, a white boy, very good looking, being attractive, being a man and being a white person. You know, this combination, I, I feel like has given him a huge boost in society that he has not been able to mature to the extent that he needs to m mature to function as an actual respectable member of society. That's just the way I look at it. I, I, I think he's very immature. He has witty sense of humor. I personally don't think it's a bad thing. I think having a witty sense of humor is something that's very typical of immigrant families, especially Nigerians coming from Nigeria. I, I don't know anyone who was born and raised in Nigeria who does not have a potty mouth. It's just basically law. You know, I've also seen this with a lot of other immigrant families, you know, people from Mexico, people from Latin America, people from the Middle East, people from other parts of Africa. Even British people have uh, a witty sense of humor. You know, it's, it's sort of like congruently understood that this is not maliciously intended per se you know what i mean it's different when somebody is intentionally talking down on you as opposed to someone talking to you as a reflection of their culture so i think that cole's lack of maturity and knowing that not everyone speaks that language is probably basically part of the things that he needs to grow into there are certain things you probably do not want to say to people until you get to know them to understand if they speak your language and by the way language here to me is not literally language i'm talking about like on the same mindset and you know mind vibration as you so I think this is where he lacked and he definitely needs to grow. Being careful what he says, to whom he says it to, and when is appropriate for him to say those things. The way I like to do it is me personally. When I meet people for the first time, they may not understand my sense of humor. So I have to respect that. And also, you don't know what people are dealing with. You do not want to just say anything that comes into your head through your mouth because you can be killing somebody's self-esteem and making things worse. Of course, you would want to live in a society where everyone has thick skin, but this is not the reality. A lot of people are truly dying in silence. A lot of people are going through a lot of things. So this is something that I would recommend someone like Cole to possibly work on. So yes, he did say a lot of insensitive things, but honestly, I do understand where it's coming from. I don't think he meant it to be malicious. I think this is just him having a loose mouth and saying whatever comes through his mouth. And this is something that he needs to work on. And also just because he didn't intend it to be negative doesn't mean that he shouldn't be held accountable. He definitely should be held accountable. If you ever observe something that doesn't sit well with your spirit, it is imperative for you to call that thing out. Because if you don't call it out, you are indirectly co-signing that behavior as well so yes even though cole did not mean it maliciously per se it was necessary for him to be held accountable so next time he knows better to not be so ignorant because that's basically what it is ignorance and we're all ignorant to a certain extent now zaynab watching zaynab made me cringe made me cringe made me cringe i have learned so much growing up a lot of people don't realize this but there is a sense of grandiose associated with being the victim people don't know this but this is a thing a lot of people especially minority groups it doesn't matter if you're a gay black woman and a whole bunch of other minority groups this is very typical of minority groups a lot of minority groups will like to capitalize on a victim mentality because they know you're going to feel bad for them this does not negate the fact that there are people who treat minorities horribly trust me as a black immigrant queer man i have definitely had my own fair dose of my treatment and had people say slick things to me and do slick things to me and a lot of times even people consider me as dumb just because of the way i look i've had people say things that are so condescending and disparaging in front of me because they think that i am some illegal immigrant and i have no power whatsoever that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day so there's a distinction between that and what i'm about to say right now a lot of people especially certain people within certain minority groups love to capitalize on the victim mentality because it feeds their ego it gives them a sense of superiority that they deserve something it's a sense of entitlement and i was getting that from zainab this lady is clearly full of shit i'm just going to keep it real you know but i think she's being intentional doing it especially with her poise because she knows she's a 
woman and she knows that people are going to watch this and they're going to cry her a river. I've seen so many people do this. Men also do it, but I think this particular strategy is most common with women. In a relationship, it's most common with women. And I've talked about my upbringing here on, on my podcast a couple of times before, but I, I remember growing up, I saw this with my parents, for example. A lot of times I remember seeing my parents fight, but it was more so my mother physically assaulting my father. This was a very common occurrence growing up. Now, I'm not saying he did deserve it. I'm not saying he did not deserve it because at the end of the day, you married her and she married you. So that's between both of you, right? But at the same time too, there are healthier ways to resolve an issue between two adults, especially when you have a bunch of kids in your vicinity. You know, like we were, I was like, what? I was the oldest kid. I was about 13 years old. My sisters were 11, nine, seven years old. Being exposed to that toxicity, of course, that did a whole lot of negativity on me. I can't really speak for my sister, but I know that this is one of the things that I had to work on through therapy, just watching this very hostile environment with my parents, you know, going back and forth. But what was very appalling with this situation is the fact that at the end of this assault, my mother would actually physically assault my father. She would cry a river. Like she would tell this story. She would change the story and make herself the victim. And she did that so confidently because she knew that as a woman, a lot of people are quick to cry her river. I, I don't know what's wrong with the society we're living right now. People would not ask questions just because a woman is complaining about what a man did to her. So therefore, you just co-sign it. That makes no sense whatsoever. You know, and I know that I have this unpopular opinion about everything and I'll probably get some hatred and backlash for this for being a woman hater. Trust me, this is not what I'm doing. I'm just calling out the bullshit. We've seen this with Amber Heard and I remember talking about Amber Heard before this whole trial thing happened a few years ago and I called it out that this woman is full of shit. The reason why people don't think she's full of shit is because of the way she looks. Blonde hair, green eyes and you know, she looks very good and we are not used to associating this particular type of look with being an aggressor. This is why when someone like Johnny Depp complained about her, it fell on deaf ears and then she comes out and cries domestic abuse and then all of a sudden everybody's crying her river and they've made her the face of the me too movement makes no sense whatsoever so this woman watching this reunion she made up all these stories about the tangerine she made up all the stories about how he told her to stop eating or she stopped eating because of him this makes no sense whatsoever because going back to the whole my parents situation i'm not trying to make this about me i'm just i'm just trying to paint a better picture here going back to the whole situation with my parents it was just ridiculous to try to imagine my father putting his hands on my mother because my father's this docile man who's very lanky shorter than my mother my mother's much bigger much buffer and more assertive it just didn't compute for this little man to be bossing this big woman around it makes no sense going back to the same situation with zainab and uh, and co it doesn't to me co seems like a regular frat boy who could who would probably run away in front of a spider or something like that. It makes no sense for me to try to imagine Cole being the reason why Zainab stops eating. So the only thing that makes sense to me now, the narrative that makes sense to me is the fact that Zainab is insecure, which is understandable. I get that. We all have insecurities. Having insecurities is part of the human experience. I'm sure even Jesus probably had insecurities at some point in his life. It is what it is, right? But you have to deal with your insecurities, not project it on somebody else, you know, because when you have insecurities and somebody says things you take them out of context as me as a person who grew up in a nigerian household uh, where people have witty sense of humor and very sarcastic you know very potty mouthish kind of situation i'm used to that i'm used to you know saying something that is actually quite harmless and having people take that out of context but I've, after i've grown into my own being i've come to realize that this is not everyone not everyone will understand it so as a result i learned to show that side of me to certain people that i know for sure for sure are going to understand it and they they have the discernment to understand that this is not Uche being intentionally malicious. I think this is what was going on with Cole. But because Zainab is so insecure, she interpreted that as an attack. But the crazy thing is, if you feel so attacked, so belittled, why not leave? Why not walk away? But you don't walk away. You stay there because you actually want to be in this relationship. But instead of you trying to be as intentional as possible to come up with a healthier communication, effective communication between you and your supposedly future spouse, you project this narrative of you being a victim because you know it will make you feel much better this to me is one of the most manipulative things about a victim mentality narcissist Th again this is so common especially with a lot of minorities but not just minorities not just women not just black people but you know it's a human behavior where people know for sure that you're more likely to cry them a river if they tell the stories and because they know that you are susceptible to their bullshit they even add more stories they add you know they make up stories they lie like in the situation of 
about her saying that Cole got a number from some lady at the bachelor party, which is clearly a lie. Like, come on, even the guys were there to attest it. But she's making up the story. It just, it did not look good at all. But again, unfortunately, we live in a society where people don't think at all. I, I don't know what's in the water. I don't know what's in the air. Everyone co-signed her nonsense. And uh, towards the end of that, oh my God. Towards the end of this reunion, you can see the grain on her face. It's sort of like the, the grain of triumph. Like, yes, I got my dose of narcissism. I got my dose of grandiose. I feel important. All eyes on me. I'm the victim. Again, there is a sense of grandiose associated with being a victim. Trust me, a lot of people like being a victim. They enjoy being a victim. Even when there is a very obvious opportunity for you to leave, you still remain there because you know that there is some type of pity party waiting on you. You know that people are more likely to cry you a river and put you on a pedestal. Oh, you didn't deserve that. Such a good person. All this nonsense. Even though you can literally get up and walk away. Again, Cole does not look like he has any type of power over this woman. Like, he made you to stop eating? He really made you to stop? Okay, man. Chad, please buy. The reason why I'm making this particular episode is because these kind of people exist everywhere. This is why I've talked a lot on my previous episodes. It is imperative that you vet everyone that comes into your life. Do not just let any Tom, Dick, and Hair into your life. Vet them. Take time to get to know us. Especially if you're going to get married to someone, especially in a heterosexual relationship where children are bound to be born into this family. You do not want to be tied into somebody who's going to be sucking your energy and sucking the soul out of you. Take your time to get to know people. Few weeks, few months is not enough to get to know someone enough to get married to them. In my personal opinion, I think that Cole dodged the bullet. A big 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 bullet i hope he walked away with maturity to know that hey certain things could could hurt but i don't think he should change who he is i don't think i i get that he apologized he shouldn't have assumed that position of yes i am the aggressor and you are the victim because you basically gave her what she was looking for i think cole is a fine man you know physically there's definitely a whole lot of room to grow mentally and i think possibly the show has been or could be a catalyst for him to grow into a, an even finer man mentally so he can find the woman that is more fitting for him the woman is definitely not Zainab I think Zainab needs to go back into therapy and work on her, on her own insecurities because I think Zainab is a beautiful woman I think she's beautiful and I think she's smart but you not making peace with your own insecurities the way you look or even the fact that your parents are not alive and projecting it on somebody else as though it is their fault and you are the victim that is not the way to go ma'am you're more likely to have a very turbulent relationship very volatile relationship and good luck keeping that I feel like at this point, if this woman does not address these issues, the only kind of relationship that she would be successful at is a relationship where the man just basically gets on all fours and worships her. She tells him to jump and he jumps and sit. He sits. Yeah, you might as well just go get a puppy. If she's watching this, I don't think she, she even knows who I am. But Zainab, if you're watching this and this clip gets to you, sis, I highly recommend that you go to therapy. Like, go deal with the fact. Life is hard. Trust me. And I've had so many therapy sessions in my life and I'm still going to be having more because life is a process you healing doesn't end until your last breath if you're still dealing with the fact that your parents are not alive i get it if you're still dealing with the fact that you're not the preferred blonde hot blonde thing that hollywood projects i get it if you're still dealing with the fact that your body is a little out of shape which to me is not i get it if, if you're still dealing with you thinking that your face is not good or is it puffy or whatever it is i get it i don't think that i think she's very beautiful there's nothing wrong with her body but if you believe that that is you zanab giving power to your insecurity and that needs to be rectified if not you're going to take it to the next relationship and back to the shit you go this is a very toxic i mean a lot of these people show toxic qualities probably with the exception of uh, sk and uh, raven they're my favorite i think they're super awesome in my opinion but everyone else showed red flags some more major red flags than others but i wanted to pinpoint on this particular one because i've seen this play out so many times not only in my own personal life but in just observing a lot of people and as a result this is one of the reasons why i say that i walk around with a mask hazmat suit on because i don't know what people are smoking there's so much distortion in this world this is why there's so much brokenness and loneliness in people because we're not getting it right you know a lot of people left for me alone i would highly suggest that people go into therapy literally it 
be law for everyone to go into therapy. Life sucks, and we all need to heal congruently. That's the only way we can survive this, this life with, with each other. Anyway, this is the end of today's episode. Please let me know what you think. Do you agree with me that one, SK and uh, Raven are the favorite in uh, Love is Blind season three? And also, do you agree with me that uh, Cole, his issue is just immaturity? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with him per se. I think he's an attractive man, but up here, he needs to grow a little bit more, you know, like working himself as an, ind as an independent, grown adult man. And do you also agree with me that in this situation, Zainab is the problem. She's very insecure, has not made peace with her insecurities, and she is projecting to be the victim because she knows that people are going to throw her a pity party. You know, again, it is a form of grandiose narcissism, you know, victim mentality, grandiose narcissism, where you play to be the victim and then people will cry your river. And then all of a sudden you feel superior, you know, because you feel this unhealthy, ridiculous sense of entitlement that the world should go a certain way when in reality what should be is that you get your shit together and go back to therapy and work in yourself so you can maximize your fullest potential as a human being occupying space and time if you do not agree with me please share your thoughts down below i'm always up for learning maybe i'm the one who's confused i always look forward to reading these comments thank you so much for your continued support do not forget to hit that bell notification so every time i upload a video you be the very first to be notified follow me on social media facebook twitter tiktok and linkedin at ltau with uche instagram is uc underscore images thank you so much until next video.